Every day we have 5,000 more Yemenis falling sick. We've got more than 20 million people who are at risk of famine in just four countries. We've all seen the horrific trauma that so many Syrians have felt as they've gone through this conflict. Over the last 10 years, the world has become a more dangerous place. From those ravaged by war and natural disasters, for millions of people, NGOs are a lifeline. It is clear that globally we're entering very turbulent times. But how well prepared are these organisations for future problems? Some aid groups say charities need to adapt their structure, operations and values to remain relevant and successful. One in 50 people around the world need humanitarian help. Last year, over 65 million people were displaced from their homes, almost double the number in 1996. It's predicted that by 2030, nearly half the world's population will live with the threat of violence or conflict. As the nature of conflict and its aftershocks shift, some say the aid landscape must change too. The transfer of aid has traditionally been from the Northern Hemisphere to poorer countries in the South. But now that relationship is changing. A growing number of emerging countries are relying less on foreign aid. The South is not one thing anymore. There are some very, very poor countries that are very strongly dependent on foreign aid. Many countries of the South are, uh, you know, they have their own aid programs and so they're initiating or expanding their aid programs. Their affairs, a rise in nationalist policies in the West could see a drop in the amount of aid given to poorer countries. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. The US has the world's largest foreign aid budget, $30 billion. But President Trump says he wants to slash it by around a third. Even though uh, the US may be reducing its aid budgets, um, it gets blurred into, you know, security um, and other sorts of, um, you know, other policy objectives, international policy objectives. So it becomes very hard to actually keep track these days of exactly what aid is and, you know, how its, um, its extent is, is changing. Where there are natural disasters and conflict, poverty often follows, and the need for aid. But as local communities increasingly help themselves, and aid agencies try to adapt and restructure, will we see an end to big aid? And what could that mean for the communities who need it?